What is good gang? Today I have a lesson for you guys. We are going to be going over forming a daily bias. Now, what does forming a daily bias include? Uh, realistically, it's the same thing as a bias on any time frame, whether that be your execution time frame, um, your bellwether time frame, or the daily time frame. For me, my bellwether time frame is the daily time frame. Most of the derivatives I'm looking for are from the daily range. So going into the week, you're going to be looking for a couple of things. Uh, weekly power of three and daily power of three. Now this is pretty much <clears throat> universal on trending conditions. So for weekly power of three, we want our to define our weekly draw on liquidity this is essentially how where is price looking to go what objective do we have on the weekly chart now how does that help us because that will give us the framework for the week of where we are opening and where we expect to head first. Power of three being this. Now we have our accumulation. And then we have manipulation. If we're looking for bullish conditions, it's very possible you see something like this where we run the consolidation highs and then we start reaching lower to open the week until we reach a higher time frame PD array in the form of daily or weekly even four hour but that's a little low for a weekly um, Judas swing and then you know Tuesday or Wednesday depending on you know what high impact news we have that week you'll be looking to place your low of the week in bullish conditions and then you expect your shift right you take out this swing high here and then you expect to reach your weekly target in bullish conditions and then distribute the longs and consolidate So this is like your your general your general shape on a weekly time frame if we're looking for bullishness. You have your consolidation here. You run the liquidity above the range. You tr initially trade below, reaching some sort of internal liquidity or liquidity pool. So PD or A or liquidity pool and then midweek reversal. Um Tuesday or Wednesday before London close on Wednesday. You expect to have one extreme for the week set depending on where your high impact news is for the week. I know sometimes like CPI um, could be on like a Thursday and then those conditions will be a little less um, generic as in you can't expect you know this to be perfect but this is your your framework for the week so identify weekly draw which would be where is price inevitably want to end up which is your objective which is here
and this weekly objective is typically going to be coming from a weekly time frame, whether that be in form of a liquidity pool or a PDRA, you are looking for price to get to this area. And this down here is your vehicle to get here. Now, why do I say vehicle? Because you're looking to balance or create an exit of liquidity or balance a range that will then take us to our objective. Now, this has to do also with, you know, your Where you're at in the you know weekly stage are we seeking internal or external liquidity we know price oscillates from internal to external liquidity so picking what this is going to be whether it be a pdra or liquidity pool and likewise this being a pdra or liquidity pool will be determined based on where we're at in price now this is the same thing this structure is going to be the same thing we see on a generic day, right? Except we're not looking at Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We're looking at sessions, right? So typically this is going to be your Asia, Asia, Asia session. Sorry. If this is Asia session, that means coming out into London Open, we're going to have this run on liquidity if we're expecting bullishness. you're expecting bullishness for our daily expansion so London is going to run the stops the buy stops in Asia and then seek sell side liquidity until we get to a liquidity pool in form of previous day low or previous session low or even if this is like a Monday we're looking at like Friday low or Thursday low right and this will be our vehicle that will take us to our daily objective. And our daily objective can just be um, Asia highs or, you know, previous day high, etc. So you're always going to be coming in with this framework. Okay, where is my weekly objective? Where is my daily objective? For your weekly objective, okay, if Monday is going to be the initial range, Tuesday is going to be the expansion from the range, and then Wednesday could be your reversal. That means Thursday and part of Friday should be an ex expansion and this is your target. Let us hop into some charts. I go over NAS a lot. Uh, I prefer to trade NAS, and this will be a perfect example that we have in real time. So here are your daily separators. Here's the start of the week. We'll put this here. So what did NAS do? We started the week and we started in a range even though we are expanding to the upside. Why do I say we're ranging? Because we're oscillating on both sides of weekly opening price. And this I'm using Midnight New York because ICT uses Midnight New York for opening price. But look what we're doing. Internal liquidity, external liquidity, 
internal liquidity, external liquidity, internal liquidity, external liquidity. Now, how do you identify a change in direction, an SMR? Well, this on a low time frame right here will be your SMR because you're taking a daily high and then you're making a low time frame shift. Return to internal, so external is taken here. Internal, external is then taken again, and then internal. So an external to external liquidity sweep is a shift in market structure. And then we return to internal liquidity, back to external liquidity, internal liquidity, external liquidity, internal liquidity, external liquidity. Now, what did I just tell you? External to external is a shift in market structure. So you have external liquidity here in form of weekly lows being taken out here, new lows here, new lows here. So all this is external liquidity as well as tagging into an, a previous liquidity pool being this daily swing low right here. The top of this zone was a daily swing low. When, and this one, this wick, will hold more liquidity than this wick because this is a run on stops. So now we've saw external liquidity and we've also taken more external liquidity. And now we are internal liquidity. So now we are bullish. Now what does that say for the week? Right, it's Wednesday, New York session. We've accumulated below weekly opening price and we've created a shift in market structure and reclaimed weekly opening price going into New York on Wednesday. So for me, we could be expecting bullish expansion. Now, if I'm expecting bullish expansion, where am I looking for price to end up? <clears throat> so in terms of weekly objective, I believe the weekly objective was the sell side liquidity that we just took. So for me, my weekly objective is met. And that was also my quarterly objective because this happens on all time frames. At the beginning of the quarter, we ran and balanced internal liquidity. So I was expecting external liquidity to be next. And we are in the last few days of the quarter. So now if we've taken external liquidity, my next draw on liquidity would be internal range liquidity, which will be in form of these daily PD arrays. And you also have this swing high that can be taken over the current week. So let's see how, you know, depending on where we're at in the week, what ha price has accomplished, you can frame based on that alone. Have we taken outside of liquidity? Have we formed a swing extreme uh, after a set area? So today we will know if this low doesn't get violated. We know that we can expect higher prices for, for the short term. Um, understanding P of power of three accumulation manipulation distribution is the key to framing your daily and weekly bias. You do not have to be correct every day or every week of your bias. And your bias can change throughout the week depending on how the first couple days open in your week or you know where did you come to the charts where it was priced at relative to the beginning of New York session or pre New York session, what did we accomplish in London? Right? So your bias is never 
you're, you're never stuck to it. Um, as traders, it's important to pivot given new data. But you have to make sure that the data invalidates your original idea. As you guys saw me earlier this week, I was looking for lower prices to start the week. And that's not what we got. We got higher prices to start the week. My initial plan was we'd make a Tuesday low of the week and revert back into the range, considering this is the quarterly close and we've expanded to a quarterly extreme and a weekly extreme. So I'd be looking for a purge of that extreme and then revert back into the range, similar to what we're getting now. <clears throat> but how we got there, my bias changed. I saw us moving up on Monday, so Tuesday, I was expecting more upside, and we got our shift. And that's okay. We were able to participate in this, even though my draw for the day was incorrect going into the day. So don't think that you need to get the bias right every day. If you get through your daily bias, your daily draw correct, 50% of the time, you know, that's easily doable, easily doable. That gives you the option to look for the possibility to participate in the market, you know, two to three days a week, which is more than enough. We should not be looking or trying to participate in the market daily. You know, that is not something that is a low threshold skill and more than likely you're not executing on quality if you are looking to participate every single day because even though there will be moves every single day they're not all made the same the conditions are not all the same how do i frame high quality and low quality conditions um, i'm looking at the week so pre nfp um New York session on Thursday could be a little bit rough. Um, I will be very reluctant to trade those days. The end of the day, Thursday, leading like especially PM session New York leading into NFP. Um, the the more in the more highly anticipated news events, CPI, NFP, um, FOMC or Fed rates, those tend to track liquidity more prior to the event because they have a more volatile delivery. They run larger ranges, bigger pools of liquidity, multiple pools of liquidity upon its release. Um, so that right there is three, three days out of 20 trading days in a month that I wouldn't trade. Um, typically I won't trade pre anything before New York session on a Monday because everything I look for is based on range deviation from Monday. So me executing on a Monday is rare. And if I do execute on a Monday, it's just a scalp in and out real quick, very nimble. But let us get into a little bit more of the daily PO3. And we have it right in front of us. So as we just went over weekly PO3, we can go over daily too. And here's your daily. Again, using New York opening price. Here's your accumulation coming into the day. Here's your manipulation. You are accumulating orders above daily opening price into a liquidity pool.
Add that liquidity pool, you go external to external. Because this is taking external liquidity, so this is the outside of the range. This is the outside of the range, inside of the range, outside of the range, outside of the range. External to external, shift in market structure. Opportunity to, to participate in here. More external liquidity. After external liquidity, internal liquidity. Look where we come back to. Right to daily opening price. And then we expand further. And then we accumulate. Now, midweek reversal. You accumulate. Here's midnight New York price. You accumulate below the price into a liquidity pool. External to external. Internal shift in market structure, bullish delivery. Where are we looking at? We are looking at liquidity pools and PD arrays to target liquidity pool here, PD array here, here, liquidity pool here, liquidity pool here, PD array here. And that's how I will be taking my thought on price for the rest of the week. Guys, that about wraps it up for our lesson today. New York session is on the way. Thank you for tuning in. I hope this helps. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. Um, if you'd like to see more lessons, leave any ideas you have in the comments, and I will do my best to get to them. Thank you. Until next time.